This week, we reached 100 million reported cases. More cases have been reported in the past two weeks than during the first six months of the pandemic. Tiny ray of hope touched down in Sydney today, the arrival of Australia's first shipment of COVID-19 vaccines. It appears this proposal of a European Super League, which poses an existential threat to football as we know it, is going ahead. And ultimately, it would have ruined English football. It would have ruined the Premier League. And thankfully, it has been stopped now to that devastating earthquake in Haiti right now nearly 1300 people are confirmed dead with at least 2800 injured and hundreds of others still missing <laughs> flash floods caused by tropical cyclone Saroja have delivered devastating flooding to remote islands of Indonesia and parts of East Timor obviously we know the news that Donald Trump has been given a permanent suspension on Twitter. This is the first shot of our inspiration <laughs> for crew members walking out of Hangar X. This is amazing. Decollage liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. Colombia's most wanted drug lord captured. Breaking news out of London. Buckingham Palace has just announced Prince Philip. The Duke of Edinburgh has passed away at the age of 99. The COVID-19 pandemic has now killed more people than any other viral epidemic in the 21st century. What an amazing year. We laughed. We cried. We cried. I guess I should address the elephant in the room, right? So, I got a new TV, LG OLED. C1, they're actually pretty good. 4K, 120 hertz, HDR. There's not really much else you could really want from a TV. Okay, okay, fine. So I broke my arm. Six months ago. So I got COVID at the start of the year and I had to isolate for seven days. The first day out of isolation, my friends thought it would be a really great idea to go rollerblading. And I thought, why not? I used to be a gun as a kid and I'm pretty good at ice skating. So what could go wrong, right? Well, here's a jackass recreation of what happened. So I was riding on the path and there was a crack in the ground and I wanted to avoid it for whatever reason. And I just fell over and I fell on my arm. And the problem is that it wasn't even a bad fall, but somehow I fell on my arm and I cracked the radial head in my arm. On top of that, the next day when I was driving to the doctors, I don't know if it was because I was tired or because my arm had been broken, but I knocked this mirror clean off someone else's car. So that was the start of my 2022. But we're not here to talk about 2022. We're here to talk about the year that was 2021. To tell you the truth, I don't actually really remember much of the year. Here in Melbourne, we were locked down for like half of the year. So we spent half of the year at home. And when we were allowed to actually go out and do things, there really wasn't much to do because everything was closed. I managed to see Harry Potter and the Cursed Child though, somehow in the middle of COVID with a theater packed full of people. Really good show by the way. But apart from that, um, what else did I do? Uh, so I actually started working full time. So I didn't really have much time to do anything else, include make videos, but I hope to change that. And so here is my first video in a year, my annual 2021 review. The categories for this year are world events, movies, sports, TV shows, technology, politics, and video games. Movies is gonna be a whole separate video because I watched a lot of movies in 2021 and I tried to watch every 2021 release that I could. So that's, like I said, a whole dedicated video where I'm going to go through some short reviews of everything that I watched. And as for world events, well, we actually sort of covered that in the montage at the start. And as you can tell, that's a definite strong one out of 10. Realistically, there really wasn't that much to enjoy about 2021. We went through the year of the pandemic in 2020 where everything was sort of new to us. In 2021, we had already gone through this year of the pandemic, so we sort of already knew what was going on. So by that time, we were a little bit impatient with the pandemic and one another. I think collectively, we all grew a little bit impatient. Thankfully, we're doing a little bit better now, thanks in part to the vaccines and the such. So this year, we're really not hoping for another 2020 or 2021. 
that was bad. Kind of doesn't give a lot of hope for the categories, hey? But hey, let's find out. Let's start with TV shows. Anime. Damn, I really only got into it a fair bit last year. It's really interesting how we can associate animation with kids content. But realistically, there are such rich and creative stories that can only be done in animation. And there's a long list of them. There are the normal starters like Cowboy Bebop, Death Note, Neon Genesis, and Ghost in the Shell. But there are animes for anything. If you want to have a good laugh, just watch One Punch Man. If you want a fun and funny adventure, there's Dragon Ball. Are you the type of person who enjoys eating and enjoys having sex, sometimes at the same time? Well, there's Food Wars. Maybe you're the type of person who really enjoys crying. There's Violet Evergarden. Or if you like your mind to be blown multiple times throughout the seasons, there's always Attack on Titan. The best part is that these animes remain timeless because they're animated. Everything I mention is great and I'd recommend them all. As for the 2021 aspect, well, animation is a little bit different to TV shows because it takes a lot of time and a lot of dedication to get these seasons out. So you don't tend to see seasons release every year or so. It's more like every three to four years, if you're lucky. But Attack on Titan Part 2 came out and it was, of course, very fantastic. But, but everyone assumed that this was going to be the end of the series until a couple of the last episodes you were like, uh, I don't know if they can wrap this up that well <laughs> in such a short period. And of course, they announced Part 3 of the final season at the end of Part 2. But you know what? I'm actually all for another season of Attack on Titan. As for TV shows, we saw the end of Brooklyn Nine-Nine. We saw the end of Money Heist. And we saw the wrap up of a show that I really loved, Gamora. I think the show ended as it needed to. It felt kind of very condensed and the season was very different to the ones that came before it. But I do have to say that I really enjoyed the way that they wrapped up the series. South Park, the mandatory mention in all of my review videos, of course did a great job of talking about COVID. But you know what? We were introduced to a lot of new TV shows. Time with Sean Bean was really engaging and one of my highlights. Dexter New Blood was kind of... Eh. I'm not really sure if this was a necessary addition to the Dexter series. The Chucky TV show, which was what I was actually really excited for, started off really strong in its first episode. And I hate to say this as a massive fan of Chucky and a massive fan of the child's plays, but it just got worse as it went on. But hearing Brad Dourif's Chucky again was quite refreshing, I've got to say. Squid Game, shit. I love how foreign language films and TV shows are becoming part of the norm in Western culture. This TV show was fresh, it was creative, and it even had a message behind it. White Lotus came out, I haven't seen it, but I heard it's very good. Dope Sick, the same. And I watched through Mayor of East Town, which was pretty good too. It was a good year for TV shows. I mean, we are actually in such a great era of TV shows that it's overtaking what films really used to be. Great stories, great production value, and characters to remember. Hell, even Marvel, who are oversaturating their product, even managed to make some decent shows in Loki, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and Hawkeye. But then there's also WandaVision, which was absolutely pure trash. But we can't have it all, can we? TV shows and anime gets a 7.5 out of 10. Let's move on to video games. You know what I really love? re-releases of 10 year old games. No, forget about that. 2021 did deliver some really fresh and exciting new games. Valheim released with an old school look, but with fun and satisfying gameplay. Deathloop brought gunplay to a game that focused on time like a Christopher Nolan movie. A game that's really unique and a game that I'm actually still playing through is It Takes Two, which is a two player co-op game where you solve puzzles and have to work together with quick and clear communication. Something that actually ties in really well with the story that they're trying to tell. We saw Back for Blood, which is definitely not Left 4 Dead 3. Far Cry 6 with the most annoying and broken co-op. Battlefield 2042, which was probably the biggest game flop in the past few years. And 12 Minutes, a game that makes out like you can choose your path, but kind of not really. I do think though that because of social media, games that are well produced and well thought out, even if they don't have the marketing, are getting a lot more attention than they ever used to because of it. The ones that do stand out are the ones that have great attention to detail, they have great gameplay, or they have both. And you know what? I really like that. Actually, you know what else came out in 2021? GTA The Definitive Edition. 
Now, I know it's easy for people to shit on Rockstar for the direction that they went with this. Outsourcing the production to some shitty mobile game company who, for whatever reason, use the mobile game versions as the foundation for their game, who didn't really seem to test for any bugs or just made really terrible upscale versions of the character models. But with all of that, I still do want to say I really liked it. Vice City and San Andreas, that is. I like them because they are amazing games and a fresh skin on top rather than a remaster is fine with me. But it really goes to show how great story, gameplay, characters, music, and world building create unforgettable and timeless games. Grove Street Games got lucky that the games themselves were already great games. Now, I really used to enjoy GTA 3 when it came out, but I can tell you now that that is a terrible game. <laughs> There's a protagonist who doesn't speak. There's a pretty forgettable story with a terrible map, no variations in the map, no variations in the cars, and a tiny selection of music. You can't be serious. I just heard this fucking song. Why the- Fuck you, Rockstar. But at the time, in 2021, it was amazing. It was the only sandbox game that we had at the time, and it revolutionized the gaming industry. But I think the problem, realistically, with the release of the Definitive Edition, is that GTA 5, the newest GTA that we have, came out nearly 10 years ago. It came out on the PS3, and was re-released on the PS4, and then now on the PS5. And we still don't have GTA 6. We don't even have a trailer. So Rockstar Games, you know what we want. And that's Rockstar Games Table Tennis 2, baby. All right, let's get to politics. Another year's gone by, and uh, tell me what's happened. Oh, well, Bryce and Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> Controversial couple of maths. Everyone thought like Bryce was like such a dog, such a dirty cunt, but at the end of it, like it turned out, like after the show, it turned out like they're still together, they've had a child together. I don't know if he's still like putting on a show, like to prove to the world that he's like some genuine guy, because at the start, like, oh, it's just. What a season. What a season. You said last year that you weren't going to be into sport because maths is on and you've got a girlfriend, but... Um, yeah, but I actually got her into a sport, actually, Formula One, if anything. Yeah, actually, I heard about that. And um, I heard that you said that F1 athletes aren't actually athletes. It's not a real sport. <laughs> it's not a real sport. <laughs> Let's start with the F1. Who won the F1? Actually, I know that because... Uh, you got me into it as well. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, unfortunately Max Verstappen. At the time we enjoyed it and we um, we were rooting for Max, it but- it. He won the Drivers' Championship. There's also the Constructors' Championship. You know who won that? That was Mercedes. Yes. Yeah. The Ferrari was not fighting for the championship, but they will this year. Who won the AFL? Uh, Melbourne Demons won. Uh, I think that was a good season of football. I'm glad that like, a team that hasn't won it in a long time has won it. They really deserved it. They definitely had the best team all year. A good season of AFL. Who won the NBA? Uh, Milwaukee Bucks. It's good. Uh, led by Giannis Antetokounmpo. <laughs> the Greek freak. They call you that, though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but for different reasons, not for basketball reasons. Oh, yeah. What happened in the soccer? Uh, well, EPL. Uh, Manchester City won which I'm not a fan of because I'm a United fan. They bought their way to another championship. Champions League, Chelsea won, which was surprising. And City, uh, I don't want to talk about it. AC Milan won, but I don't want to talk about it. Oh, what do you think about the Super League that happened? Oh, terrible well, idea. Well, it didn't, didn't happen. happen. <laughs> <laughs> that was proposed to happen. Just a terrible, terrible idea. Tennis. Let's uh, find out about it. We'll tennis. go through the Grand Slams. Start with the Oz Open. Novak's Djokovic. 
the <laughs> <laughs> French Open, Novak's Djokovic, Wimbledon, Novak's Djokovic. Do. And then US Open, Daniel Medvedev. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. I don't know who that is, but it's better than Novak's yeah. Djokovic. Yes, he's a Russian player. It's pretty good, yeah. Well, NFL, um, LA Rams won. Yeah, it's a good season. LA, it was surprising for them to win. I didn't expect them to win, but nevertheless, they won. Did you like the halftime show with Dr. Dre? Um, isn't that season or <laughs> <laughs> that was twenty twenty two? Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Well, if you want to <laughs> talk about that one, the highlight of that was. Uh, I'll ask. No, 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 I'll ask you next year then. Okay, okay. Right. We'll save it for next year. Yeah. Did you watch the Olympics? Bits and pieces. I watched a bit of the weightlifting. Um, that's about it, really, yeah. Not too much of it. Did you watch the archery? Mm, yeah, but I didn't, I don't know. Couldn't name anyone or yeah, any okay. countries that won. I'm actually going to be in the archery next year. <laughs> 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 golf. I didn't watch too much golf and I don't know who won, so. Well, there's too, a lot of tournaments. What do I pay for? <laughs> <laughs> you don't pay me, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> so, overall, if you had to rate sports, for the year, what would you give it? Was it a good well, year for sports? Well, not one of my teams in any sports won anything. Nevertheless, my passion for F1 was reignited last year. So getting I back can, into sports- I can and, tell. <laughs> <laughs> um, getting back into that has like lifted sports for me. Um, I'd give it a six out of 10 this year. Even though none of my teams win, it was still a good year for sports. Well, we'll see what next year brings if Ferrari can yeah. not not defeat themselves in the F1. Oh, they probably will, let's be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to leave it at that and leave that as a gag because realistically in 2021, not a lot happened for technology until I remembered my repressed memories. <laughs> If your personality revolves around you being a crypto or NFT collector, obviously this part isn't for you. And you might want to find a new hobby and or personality trait. Now I know people who have made money from NFTs and cryptocurrency, but let's be real. NFTs are fucking stupid. Even cryptocurrency is a joke now. When your cryptocurrency isn't being used for the one thing that it's meant to be, a currency, then there's no reason for it to exist. And the idea that you're buying something with the intent to sell it off later for a larger amount of money, guess what? Everyone has that idea. <laughs> if that's the only reason it's being bought, it doesn't work. It's not sustainable. And only a very few small amount of cryptocurrencies and maybe NFTs will actually survive. And if you're relying on Daddy Elon, the man of empty promises, to pump up your Dogecoin or whatever meme that he's stolen from a meme generator that week, that's not gonna last long either. Way back when, when Bitcoin was like the only and main cryptocurrency, I went on the dark web just out of curiosity to see what you could buy. And I thought, damn, that's actually a pretty good idea. A token that has value that you could sell to someone, uh, usually for illegal products. <laughs> I never bought Bitcoin because I never needed a silenced pistol or to assassinate anyone. But I did think at the time it wasn't too bad of an idea. And you know what? I still don't think it's necessarily too bad of an idea. I'm just not sure if it should be used as an investment of any sort. You know, there was a small group of people who saw what Bitcoin could be and could see that the price could be inflated higher and higher and they bought short and they sold high. But now everyone has that same idea. I'm not really gonna go more into cryptocurrency apart from acknowledging that Bitcoin and Ethereum have some sort of use to them. I'm here to talk about NFTs. You know, a lot of people are like, I'm surprised you aren't into NFTs. You love technology. Yeah, but I'm also not a fucking moron either. I love art. I love the idea of art. I'd even sometimes in some circumstances consider myself an artist. But the idea of selling digital art for exorbitant amounts of money that theoretically anyone could make a copy of doesn't sound like the greatest idea to me. And it's not because digital art isn't art because it definitely can be. But you know what, let, let me tell you a story. I love Watchmen. I love the animated comic and I love the live action TV show that they made recently. I think it's one of the best TV shows that has ever been made and I fucking love it. In that TV show, there's a scene where Laurie is in front of an Andy Warhol-esque 
picture. It has Dr. Manhattan on it, it has Night Owl and Ozymandias, and it has her on it. And when I saw that scene in the show, I thought, man, I fucking want that. So I searched the web for it and I found it, but I found a small version of it that the quality wasn't good enough to actually print it. So I kept searching and I found an artist who recreated this picture almost perfectly. So I messaged them and I said, hey, I would really love to have a copy of your uncompressed art. They said, sure, send me $40. I said, sure, here's $40. They said, here you go. And they gave me the uncompressed piece of art. Do I own the artwork? No. Do I need to? No, but I have what I wanted, a printable artwork file that I can professionally print and frame. I don't care that the artist owns their work. That's fine with me. If it was the only one in the world and the only way I could buy it was to spend $100,000, would I buy it? Uh, no, I'd just live without it, to be honest. And if we're gonna be realistic, an NFT is really just a link to a picture on a server, a server that theoretically can shut down at any time, therefore losing your piece of art. And I hope you know that. <laughs> Let me compare it to another story. Logan Paul's Charizard. Logan Paul bought a first edition Charizard Pokemon card that is rated as a 10 out of 10 PSA, and he bought it for $150,000. What does that all mean? Pokemon was first released as a Game Boy game with Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue with Charizard and Blastoise on the cover art. Soon after, the TV show and the trading cards came out. This was a very popular and still is a very popular media franchise and still is in fact the most popular media franchise in the world. When the trading cards released, they started with a very short temporary release called the first edition deck that were marked with the first edition stamp on the cards and on the box as well. And there are still boxes that go for hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. Okay, so we get that there is a very small amount of very rare, very popular trading cards. Let's add to that, that everyone wanted this Charizard card. Everyone loved this card. Everyone loved the Charizard card. Every kid at the time wanted this card and people still want this card. There's history, there's nostalgia. On top of that, the printing of these cards varied. If the borders were printed slightly out of alignment, it could never get a 10 PSA rating. If there were any scratches on the card at all, especially on the holographic part, which is very easily scratched, this cannot get a 10 PSA rating. But Logan Paul's Charizard card, has a 10 PSA rating. So we have history with the most popular media franchise in the world. We have nostalgia with people who were kids who are now adults and have money. We have scarcity, not only because this is a first edition, but it's also a 25 year old card that they don't print anymore. We have perfect printing and perfect condition. So when we look at a Bored Ape or a Gary V friend or any of these other JPEGs, what do we have compared to Logan Paul's Charizard? Fuck all if you ask me. But it has utility. I can go to the Gary V conference for free. I can go to the Bored Ape restaurant in Los Angeles for free. If you want to spend $100,000 to go to some conference to listen to some cunt tell you how to live or go to some shitty burger restaurant halfway across the world, you do that. But most people don't want to do that. It was eventually and inevitably going to crash. The idea is perfect for abuse and that's all we're seeing now. Multiple scams, multiple rug pulls, companies with no reason to make NFTs, making NFTs for some reason. Let's just maybe cool down with this stuff. Stop wasting your money, invest it into more safer, more proven options, or just don't spend it. Technology obviously gets a one out of 10. That's all we have time for folks. I hope you enjoyed this 2021 review. I hope you enjoy my 2021 movies review. I hope you enjoyed your 2021. Here's to a safe and fun 2022. Thank you and I'm out.